Hey, Jim here from 3J Music. And in this video, I want to talk a little bit about buying used gear online. So it's not easy building a YouTube channel from the ground up, focused primarily on gear demos. You might say around here that we're still digging the foundation. One of the most important factors in me being able to do this has been buying used gear, finding good deals whether it's Reverb.com or eBay or Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. Yeah, people still use Craigslist in 2024. Or some of the other smaller sites, forums, Facebook pages, uh, wherever you've known people or you yourself to have gone to buy used gear. This is something that's come up in conversation for me recently with people at a time when prices are all over the place in a way that I don't think I've ever seen before. Sometimes with brand new gear being sold even cheaper than used gear. And not only that, but scammers seemingly being more prevalent than ever. So I wanted to do this video offering a few tips for those of you that are maybe new to buying used gear online, or those of you who are maybe just not used to it. So tip number one, when you find that piece of gear that catches your eye, no matter what platform you're on, usually the seller should have some reviews, maybe. Check those immediately. It's not foolproof. A lot of people don't leave reviews. A little side note for buyers and sellers, uh, if you buy something, or if you sell something and somebody does write by you, leave a review. This is helpful for a lot of reasons, but mostly so you know who or what you're dealing with. This is important for keeping your money safe if you're buying online, or more importantly, keeping yourself safe if you're buying in person. And most importantly, if you are buying in person, meet someplace public. Stay safe. Be smart. After you've done that, check the pictures, which I'm sure you already did before you checked reviews, but check them again. Be a little bit more critical. In 2024, people still take pictures like this. If it looks like the pictures have been taken underwater with a potato, or there's just not enough, uh, ask for more. That shouldn't be an issue, and I don't think it's ever been an issue whenever I've asked for more pictures. That kind of leads into the next tip. Know the gear, know what you're looking at, research common problems or potential issues. Uh, for example, if it's a guitar, maybe a Fender style guitar where cracks in the neck pocket are a common thing, ask for pictures of the neck pocket or a Gibson type guitar where headstock breaks are fairly common. Ask for close up pictures of the headstock, the back of the neck, whatever. Uh, have an idea of what you're looking at. Have an idea of those potential problems and ask about them, especially online platforms with protection such as Reverb or eBay. You have a good case if somebody lies to you about what you're getting, if they hide these things. So know what you're looking at and ask those questions. The next tip before you go clicking that buy button, take a look around, shop around a little bit first, check prices, check if you're on reverb, check eBay, check another platform, check stores, sales. The prices, as I said, are, are all over the place in a way that I've never seen before, I don't think, and some people are pulling used prices straight out of their asses. Crazy. So shop around first. We all know that on our phones we could do that in a matter of minutes. And finally, reach out to the seller. Ask them if that's their best price. Maybe if they're online like Reverb or eBay, ask them if they can do anything about the shipping, especially if you're close by. 
a lot of sellers tend to set prices because if you're in New York, shipping to California is considerably more expensive than shipping to, say, Pennsylvania. A lot of people set their shipping prices like that. I do that. If it's something local to you and they don't have it in their description, prices firm, no trades, they may be willing to deal. They might even be willing to take some piece of gear off of your hands that you don't use anymore for partial payment or if they're of the same value and even swap. Uh, never hurts to ask. So that's it for me. I'm sure there's more tips probably that I'm missing. If you have any tips, uh, leave them in the comments of this video. This is really about keeping your money and more important yourself safe when it comes to buying used gear. And if you found this useful, appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe. Thanks.